evening, Tom. I'm so happy <laughs> to have you here with us today. How are you feeling? I am doing awesome, my friend. I'm so excited. I wanted to just jump on here and um, connect with you as we've been working together here uh, with Step 7 Ministries. Tom is the leader of Step 7 Ministries. They've been a partner with us here at New Day. And I'm so excited that this past Christmas offering, our church raised about $15,000 in order to hand over to Step 7. And I'm so excited as the lead pastor here to hand that gift over to you. Uh, for those who don't know, please share a little bit about Step 7 does and what this $15,000 gift could do for Step 7 this year. Well, Jose, boy, I don't even know where to start. So I, I, uh, I'm so excited about this day. I'm so excited about the help that you've given us um, to, to come together at, at New Day and to give thanks for what you're doing for us. I, I just can't tell you how exciting this is. I've, I've been involved with New Day since the day they opened the doors. And wow. a, lot of my, a lot of my friends are know what Step 7 is, but we're a men's ministry. We work with men that are, uh, that are struggling with substance abuse. We work with a lot of guys coming out of prison. We work with a lot of guys coming out of rehab. And we just have a very simple mission statement. It's sharing Jesus with the addicted. Wow. And we're, we're so excited. And today, during, we're actually going to get to see the fruit of this and some men who are giving their lives over to Jesus. So this is just <laughs> incredibly special for me. And I'll have to tell you that in the, in the year that's in front of us, this last year, we were able to add one house. It was a challenging year this last year for ministries, for churches, for pastors. And sure, for sure. It was challenging in some very unique ways with the, yeah. with the virus. It was just tough. And, and I was coming out of some, some issues with cancer, but, wow. but your, your gift last year allowed us to, allowed us to maintain our ministry, to keep moving forward, to continue to serve these men and to actually do it with a little bit of a reserve on hand. So there was a peace of mind due to what New Day did for us. Great. And we did get to bring Great. on yeah. one house. This, this next year, in the very near future here, it takes us mm, anywhere from maybe 7,500 to, to 10,000 to, to open up a new house. So what these funds are earmarked for, we're going to be opening up in the very near future, two new homes to, to minister to, to these men. So I... That's I'm, I'm floored. I'm floored with, with this. I mean, talking about making space to advance the kingdom of God. <laughs> and I'm so excited for that. You know, our mission here at New Day is to develop passionate Christ followers who together love God and serve people. So we're in the business of disciple making. That is, we're in the business <laughs> of transforming lives. And we've been talking about this series, Love Transforms. And today, yeah, we're going to yeah. get a chance to kind of share and speak into that about the stories of transforming love that has taken place at Step 7. And we're going to get a chance to see lives that are given over to Jesus today in <laughs> baptism. And so I'm, I'm so excited. And thank you for letting us be a part of that uh, as a strategic partner. That just reminds us that when we partner with different organizations, we continue the mission of disciple making. And I'm so excited for that to be right there in action. Thank you, Tom, for what you do. Thank you for what your organization does. Thank you for letting us partner with you. And we're so excited to be gifting you with this $15,000 today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you and, and praise, praise Jesus for the work he's doing here. Amen. How good is it to be in the presence of the Lord today, amen? Oh, it's such an amazing day. We have three baptisms today, and that's just so inspiring for me because if I can be vulnerable with you guys, I've, I've been feeling pretty distant from God lately. I've just allowed things to kind of drown him out, and seeing three guys give their lives to him is just so inspiring for my faith and just makes me want to draw closer to God as well. And so I hope that their stories, that the music we sing, that the message we hear is really inspiring to everyone here and that it helps us draw closer to him. So why don't you guys stand with us and worship as we get into our service today.
every chain will break his broken hearts declare his praise for who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. Open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save has come to set the captives free. The who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. That every knee will bow and every hung will play of the glory of God. Sing with us. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God. Our God is alive.
Again, welcome to worship, both those who have joined us online and all of you here in person. Welcome to worship. We're so glad you're here. For those who were here earlier, you saw the video of Jose, New Day's lead pastor, and Tom Roth of Step 7, a local nonprofit ministry right here in our own local community. Today we're going to give our Christmas offering. That'll be a little bit later in our service. We're so excited about that. But right now I want to invite Tom and Brian to join me. Tom Roth is the founder of Step 7. Brian Laney is Step 7's executive director. Come and join me up here. 
And this, for several weeks now, we've been in a series called Transforming Love, and we're going to continue that series today with real stories of transforming love, and we're also going to get an inside look into the ministry of Step 7. So welcome, Tom and Brian, to New Day. Thank you. Um, Yep. Good morning, everybody. And uh, excuse me, I sometimes need to take a little sip of water when I'm speaking. Um, I have to tell you, I'm I'm a little bit overwhelmed today. This is really a a special day for me. Uh, I, I was part of the church when we planted the church here in Parker. And for me to be in the pulpit again here at, at New Day is, is very special to me. So please uh, bear with me if I get a little emotional up here today. Uh, I'm not really good with dates, so this morning I actually got on the phone, or, or I got in touch with, with Pastor Kennedy. And uh, it was 2005, I was just talking with, with Lisa and with Pam. It was, it was 2005 when we planted this church. And it's just like, where does, the, where does the time go? And for me to be able to get back up here today, I, I just can't tell you how. How special that is for me. So thank you all for everything you've done for Step 7. And uh, for those who do know me for a time now, I, uh, I have a feeling what you're saying is, Pastor Tom, you need a haircut. <laughs> huh? The ones that have known me, like like Pam and Kirk over here, every time I see Kirk, he's giving me a hard time about my hair. And I have to tell you that this is not my fault. Huh? This is me strictly being obedient to my wife. Okay? Huh? And she's probably watching right now. Love you, Cindy. Um, But Cindy's a kind of a leftover hippie from the 60s. And she has been bugging me for over four decades to grow my hair out. And so this is just a result of me being obedient, okay? I, uh... I first fell in love with Jesus in the first grade. I was born and raised Catholic. And I went to Catholic school. I was, a, I was an altar boy. And some of my friends from Step 7 have heard this story, so just humor me here for a second. But in the first grade, I was an altar boy. And I would serve the 515 AM Mass five days a week, okay, we should, child labor laws, right? Uh, But it turned into quite the the blessing. Uh, I was taught that during a certain portion of the service, I was to kneel at the side of the altar, I was supposed to have my hands like this, and I was supposed to look up at the priest who was right in front of me there. So... Five days a week for about 15 or 20 minutes, I started off my day on my knees. The thing that was beautiful about it, though, is behind the priest was this huge crucifix, probably 15 feet tall. And it had Jesus hanging on it, looking down. And he was staring right at me. And I started my day this way, with Jesus looking at me. 
And I didn't know much about scripture at that time, but I had been taught that Jesus died on the cross so I could get to heaven. And as a young, young boy, two things happened. First of all, and sorry to say, but it's been taken care of, I, I grew fearful of the Father. I couldn't imagine a father. I thought that he made his son do this. So I grew fearful of the father, but in the meantime, I fell crazy mad in love with Jesus Christ. I, uh, as I grew up, I, I started to make some stupid decisions. I started to drink at probably the age of about 12 or 13. I was probably drinking alcoholically every day by the time I was about 15. By the age of 16, I was sticking needles in my arm and I, I struggled with addiction up until I was about 29 years old. I got to the point where I was, I was shooting up in my ankles so my wife wouldn't see the track marks in my arms. But thankfully the Lord stepped in and he's kept me sober for quite some time and this wonderful ministries of step seven has come forth. I, I look around and I see miracle after miracle after miracle in here. And today's a very special day. Uh, this last week, I think it was Tuesday, Jose called me up and he, he said, Pastor, is there any way that you might be able to, to preach this weekend? And I thought, I thought that'd be great. I'd love to. And I, I asked him, I said, I said, Jose, are you doing anything special? Are you in a series or what's going on? And he said, yeah, transformed by love. And I thought, wow, that's absolutely perfect. <laughs> For step seven, right? Just perfect. What, a, what an incredible opportunity I have today to stand up here and, and thank you all, first of all, and to witness for step seven. So let's, uh, let's have a quick word of prayer here. Father God, Lord, I just, again, I want to thank you for these friends. I want to thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. I want to thank you for your church, Lord. And Lord, right now, I just pray that you would uh, speak through me. We love you, we thank you, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So just quickly, Step 7 is a very simple ministry. There's three main parts to it. We have small groups that meet. We have sober living homes. And we have a Sabbath morning worship service. And it, it's funny, when I was talking with Jose the other day, and he mentioned this transformed by love. As we were talking, I said, well, what do you think, Jose, about, about 1 John 4.18? And he said, oh, that'd be great. That'd be perfect. So I just want to read 1 John 4.18 here. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Not made perfect in love. And today we talk about being transformed by love. We have a, a mission statement at step seven that is simply sharing Jesus with the addicted. And then our vision statement is to see man become Christ-centered, set free from their addictions, and transformed into leaders. Transformed into leaders. And as I was thinking about this message today, it, it, it took me to a couple of parts of scripture. First of all, I think of Acts chapter two, Pentecost. Peter gives what some people would say his first, his first sermon. He very boldly stands in front of a bunch of Jews and convicts them. He says, it's you guys, along with some wicked men, that killed Jesus, okay. This was strong stuff. 
He was very bold here, and he convicts these folks. And at the end of chapter 2 there, or close to it in, in Acts chapter 2, they're convicted, and they say, what should we do? It says they were cut to the heart. What should we do? And Peter simply says, repent and be baptized. Repent. Okay? And then we have this word transformed, which is very similar to repent. In Romans 12, it tells us to be renewed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we have this word transformed and we have this word repent. And it's interesting, if you go to the, if you go to the Greek dictionary, the two words in Greek for repent and transformed are right next to each other. One of them is metanoia. And it simply means, means to turn, to change, to change our minds, to turn away. It means to repent, metanoia. The other one, transform, is metamorpho. And we get the word what from it? Metamorphosis, okay? And it literally means to change form, okay? To repent and to be transformed. And today we have some buddies here of mine that have changed their ways, folks. They came from drugs and alcohol, and today they're going to give their lives over to Jesus in baptism. They have, they have repented. I don't know if they've changed form so much. Chris has gotten a little grayer. In, in his... <laughs> but John speaks here of fear. Perfect love casts out fear. And that's one thing that we notice in the men that come to step seven. All of them, all of them come to step seven fearful. And I believe that fear is one of the strongest emotions out there. I believe it's a base emotion. A lot of these negative emotions are rooted in, in fear. We, we, talk about, we talk about shame. Or, or sadness, or anger. Most of those have at their foundation fear. And the men that come to step seven, anybody who's struggling with addiction has a sense of separation. And in that separation, there is fear. And what we do at step seven, you met Brian a minute ago, he's gonna be up here. He, Brian spills his heart out for these men. We create a sense, a loving sense of community for these guys. And it makes all the, all the difference in the world. We talk about, about transformation. And uh, today's a day for these four guys, okay? Today we're going to see this, this baptism. Today you're going to see some of the fruit of the, of the donation that, that you're giving us. And I want to take this moment also to lift up Chaplain Mike, who is now on staff at Step 7. Mike has been with me since day one of, of Step 7, and I, I have just a ton of thanks for him. Folks, we talk about a higher power in recovery circles, okay? We always talk about a higher power. And one of our steps says we considered accepting Jesus Christ as our higher power. That's one of our seven steps. And it's, it's just beautiful, because we don't, we don't tell them that you got to dive into the baptistry today. We say, can you consider Jesus as your higher power? If you can do that, we can work with you. And when it comes to, you know, I, I'm such a lover of Jesus, you know, let's go to the source. If you need healing, let's go to the source. Okay, and we... 
I've heard it said in, in business circles, in, in retail circles, that if you, if you have a niche market and you have a good product, you should be very successful. Well, we have a niche market. We work with men that are struggling with substance abuse. We have a very specific niche market. And we have the best product going. Amen. It's Jesus Christ. We sell Jesus at step seven. And it works. And my friends, he loves our ministry. Yeah. And sometimes I think that I have the best job in the world. There's two kind of main parts to my job. I'm, I'm to tell a story, which I'm doing right now. I get to tell the story. And I get to give thanks. And today I thank each and every one of you for your help and your support of Step 7. Today again is not about me. It's not about, well it is about the ministry, but it is especially about four men. Three of them are going to get baptized over here. And then there's, there's Brian, who you just met. Brian is the executive director at Step 7. Why don't you guys go ahead and make your way on up. Um, Brian came to Step 7 about eight years ago, struggling with meth, okay? Brian was struggling with meth. He's lying. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> I gave Brian a Bible, and about two weeks later, Brian came up to me, and he said, Pastor, I am meeting a Jesus in here I had no idea about. I thought, wow, this guy's going places, and here he stands, okay, with these three men who've made a decision today to turn your lives over to Jesus, okay, to, to die to yourself in the, in the waters of baptism. This is your day. I hope and pray that you enjoy this moment. You are standing here before a church body and before the Lord saying, you know what? It's not about me anymore. It's all about you, okay? Good stuff. And, and here's Brian, after all these years, who, who preaches, he teaches, Today he's baptizing, he's baptized, I don't know how many guys in the last two years. Over 20 probably, huh? Uh, this is a powerful ministry, folks, and it works. And substance abuse is a pandemic out there. And we have a wonderful way to bring these guys into, uh, into a relationship with Jesus. And so, having said all that, I'll shut up. You're up, buddy. We on? <laughs> so uh, Matt was reminding me earlier, I have one volume, so I apologize for hollering at you. Um, thanks, PT. How cool is this? This is uh, so awesome. What an incredible, incredible day this is. Take your shoes off. You're on holy ground, guys. Um, uh, <laughs> I read that, uh, Joshua Jericho, anyway. Um, yesterday in my devotions. Um, so uh, I'll get to the point, you know, this is not about me either. This is totally about these three guys. If, if you guys had any idea what you're looking at right now, it would blow your mind. Um, when I first met these guys, they were in a real rough way. Um, I'm sure they're gonna kind of go into a little bit of this themselves when I hand the mic over. But um, Jesus is doing cartwheels right now. Amen. This is amazing, and uh, I'm just so privileged and honored to be uh, able to celebrate this day with you guys, right? Because it's a celebration of what Jesus has apparently already done in your lives, and it's also a huge celebration of the fact that you guys are turning your lives over to him. So you guys should be extremely proud of yourselves right now. It's all about you. You guys want to say something? Totally. <laughs> Um, so about three years ago, I first met Brian. This is Chris. Oh, sorry, I'm Chris. <laughs> um, I first met Brian, and I was in a real bad shape. I had nothing going for me. My life was falling apart. And Brian introduced me to a Jesus that loves me. The fear that I had lived through was no longer fear. It, it had turned into 
a true love. Like the false evidence that I had lived my life trying to run from was no longer, no longer controlling me. I was no longer in bondage. The chains were gone. Jesus had brought so much into my life and showed me the error of my ways that it took me a long, longer than it should have to come to this conclusion of getting baptized. And even though I've stumbled in the last several years, he's always been there to pick me back up. And when I made the phone call to call Brian to come back to step seven, he had open arms for me. And that to me was one of the scariest things but to have him welcome me back and lift me up the way he has has truly changed the way I perceive Jesus in my life. And thank you, Brian. You the man, Chris. Hello, everybody. My name is Shay Murrow. Just wanted to talk to you about a little bit before I put my trust in Christ. A little over two years ago, I started to hear voices in my head, which I think was caused by using drugs and alcohol. But these voices were like police talking about how they were going to set me up and send me to prison for the rest of my life. Everywhere I went, they planted drugs in the car or if I was in somebody else's car, they would plant it there. They would even plant it to where I even slept. I still remember to this day that me and my dad used to make bets coming home from the job site that he bet my paycheck that they were gonna, not going to arrest me when I got to the house. So I was uh, in fear for my life. <clears throat> well, then I uh, put my trust into Jesus Christ. Uh, I came to this ministry of Step 7 and... You know, it truly, they love each other and they help each other and they lift, they lift each other up. And, and the Bible it says, as iron sharpens iron. And all these boys in this ministry sharpen each other. And I love everybody in this ministry and I love Jesus. And I'm going to commit my life to him today. Thank you. Amen. Hi, my name is Ben Drake. Um, I just want to give some thanks right off the bat to to God and Jesus and uh, Step 7, um, PT, Brian, and my house leader, Matt. Um, they've just been incredible role models in, in my life. And I'm going to my parents. Uh, they're from here from Washington. It's kind of crazy that they're, they're actually here. I mean, it's awesome. Um, they love me through even even the darkest times. I've given up on myself, I've given up you know, on everything, and they were still there and just uh, pushing me to, to do the right thing and to, they loved me through the whole thing. Um, about 10 years ago, I fell into uh, drugs and violence, um, bad situations, and it, I got a doctorate in it. I ended up throwing my life away in a, in a big way. I got put in a situation where it was looking like I was going to spend the rest of my life in prison. Um, and then I, the divine intervention happened, and I, I had a chance to, to do treatment. And my mom called Brian and, and uh, saved, my, you know, saved my life. And now I'm here, and I'm loving life. And I just I got it back, and it's all through God. And, Jesus is dope. <laughs> I didn't tell him to say that. Um, let's do this. Okay. So what am I doing for you? Okay. Why don't you guys come on back here? <clears throat> you got a tarp up there? Or we gonna, um, how do you want to First. 
So everybody, again, this is Benjamin Drake. <laughs> and Ben, are you, uh, are you comfy? Yeah. Is it nice and warm? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, are, are you here today in front of all these witnesses committing your life over to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Yes, I am. Sweet. Well, then, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, And this is Christopher Bridgewater. Chris, in the uh, time that I've known you, you've grown so much, man, and your just outlook on everything is so incredible. And I thank you for everything that you've taught me, bro, okay? Um, right here in front of all these witnesses today, are you committing your life to Jesus as Lord and Savior? I am. Awesome. Well, then in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shay's got his bling on today. I love it. Um, Shay Morrell, everybody. Shay is becoming a leader around here in his own right. It's remarkable. Shay, in front of all these witnesses here today, do you commit your life, yourself, your ways over to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? I do. Sweet. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You guys want to come down in the front? We'll all pray for you real quick. So due to COVID and everything, of course, we can't lay hands on them. Um, but if everybody would just extend a hand towards these guys when they get up here. Or we could play the Statue of Liberty game for a while if you want. And I'll, uh, I'll pray for these guys. And if everybody would just join me in the spirit right now. Father God, Lord, again, what an incredible moment this is. I thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given all of us at another chance at life. I give you uh, all the glory, the honor, the praise, everything you deserve right now, Lord. I pray that your glory would come down into this place and touch everybody's heart and help everybody realize just how miraculous this all really is. Lord, we, uh, we need reassurance at times from you. We need we need you to prove yourself to us in our lives, and, and today you've done, that. you've done that. You've given us fuel to go on another day and another day and another day, Lord. And I pray that right now you would help these three remember this day for eternity. Lord, that uh, whatever the rest of us here witnessing this can do to minister to them in a way that lifts them up and brings them closer to your goodness and helps them fulfill the purpose that you have for them, Lord, speak to us loudly. Help us to know how to do that, Lord. But, uh, but this is their day, Lord. And Jesus, I know you're so happy doing cartwheels up there right now. And so I pray that you would just let these guys know how much you love them. Thank you for letting us all bear witness to your glory today, Lord. And I say all this in that really cool name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good job, you guys. Awesome, bro. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you.
down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering. Draw me near, desperate for you, desperate for you. I surrender.
just as I was today, your heart will be on fire all week long. Well, we are so excited to be able to give from our Christmas offering today. If you're a guest with us, you might be wondering, what is this Christmas offering thing, and why are they talking about Christmas in March? Briefly, every Christmas at New Day. We believe that Christmas can and should still change the world. And so as a church together, we decide to spend less so that we can give more. We give to a Christmas offering together, and then we give every penny of it away to organizations locally and globally that we believe are doing what Jesus would do if he were here. And so Step 7 is one of the local organizations that we're giving to. And I would just want to invite Tom to come back up and join me. And we are so excited that this year we are giving $15,000 of our Christmas offering to Step 7. And Brian, Brian, come join us too. just so proud to partner and this is just our Uh, gift to step seven thank you so much thank you so much thank you all so much well to those who call new day home we are so grateful for your generous support of ministry at New Day. We have made giving simple. Uh, On the way out, you'll find ways that you can give by scanning QR codes, going onto our website. If you're a guest with us, we want to be sure you know there is no expectation for you to participate in this part of our worship. We just love that you're here with us today. Our ushers will be dismissing you. Please stay seated until your row is dismissed. Thank you for joining us today. If you're a guest on the way out, um, there will be a guest gift for you, a bag at a table right by the door, and there will also be a treat for everyone. So as you go out, um, help yourself to a treat, and then our pastors will be outside looking forward to visiting with you there. Thank you for worshiping with us today.